I think you're going to be real happy you stopped in today. I've got some red hot glowing stocks for us. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday, December 18th. So what I do here is I like to share my due diligence with you on hot OTC and penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And we're particularly looking for those that can make us some money. Now, in most cases, I'm finding these hot stocks by looking at charts. I can look at a lot of charts in a little amount of time, and it's very easy to see the heat. Once I find heat in a chart, then I'll take the time to go rummaging around through all the press releases and the filings. When I find a hot piece of news to match my hot chart, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you regularly. Well, I was looking at my charts today, but I could not overlook the news. There was a lot of big, gigantic news today. For example, what you're looking at here, this is my Twitter account. I post a lot of news here at Twitter all day long, but primarily in the morning. I've got this habit of posting as many pre-market runners for OTC and penny stocks as I can find. I post the ticker, the headline, the percentage gains, and the price. Well, this was some of the news that I found today, but I've got a stock I'm going to share with you that blew my mind and I found it pre-market. This piece of news here, we're talking about Fintel. Now, Fintel is not a public company, but they are an excellent resource of information for stocks. They are online. Well, Fintel today bought the software provider Synaptic for 3.5 million pounds, which is more than dollars. Synaptic is currently used by more than 1,600 financial advisors, providing due diligence research, compliance tools, and software to streamline customers' journeys. Now, the reason I'm bringing Fintel up is because of the pieces of news I'm going to be sharing with you. This is a big piece of news. We're not going to look at the stock, but you can see how big it is. Syada Mobile, their price target has been increased by 600% to $57.83. Now that's huge, folks. That's a giant jump for this stock. And we've talked about this one a couple times. But what I want to point out is that this information is being relayed by Fintel. Fintel is not coming up with these numbers. As they say down here, the price target is an average of many targets provided by analysts. So they aren't giving the prices, they're just reporting them. And I make a big deal about this because the first stock we're going to take a look at, they have information on today. This is Liquor, ticker LQR, the Liquor House. Yes, we've talked about it before, but the news that came out today, we can <laughs> overlook. When I was posting this pre-market, I threw it down and then my eyes opened up. It's like, am I reading that right? That has to be a typo. There's no way that that is right. And before I post it and look like an idiot, I'm going to go verify this. So I jumped on into that news and to my astonishment, it was right. It blew my mind. So I'm going to share this with you right now. Liquor finished today at $4.05 and she was up almost 58% today. She's a penny stock on the major exchange. She's on the NASDAQ, so you can trade this for free. No transaction fees with major exchange stocks. And you can trade it pre-market, aftermarket. You can't do that with OTC. So Liquor House came onto the market back in August. And the company helps promote other companies' liquor. They don't make their own liquor. They find these small brands and they promote them. That's their business. So what was their relative volume today? <laughs> big jump, big jump in the volume going from 670,000 up to 5 million. Share structure for the company? All right. They are whittling down their share count, folks. As you're going to see in the news, they just keep buying more shares. We've got a super small share structure here. Outstanding share count is only 3.3 million. Your float is never higher than the outstanding share count and a legitimate low float starts at 10 million. So we have got an extremely low float here, which means you can see some serious price action on the chart, which by the way, is set up in a hot atypical breakout chart. Four days ago, five, this stock was at 95 cents. What's the price now? $4. We are up 400% in five days. 
volume has been coming in since that low bubble of 95 cents and right now she is tapping the 200 when she was deep down underneath she is ready for a breakout folks market cap for this company is 8.6 million financials for liquor well at the end of 2022 it wasn't their company so that doesn't matter at the end of June, it wasn't their company, so that doesn't matter. And the balance sheet is going to be owed too. But you know what? It isn't about the revenues. This catalyst supersedes anything else I could probably show you. Disclosures, did they happen to drop anything new here? No, they didn't. So let's just jump on into this news so I can blow your mind. So we've got a lot of news that we've gone through here recently. They've been making deals. Uh, they announced a marketing partnership with Brody's Crafted Cocktails. Uh, the company just partnered with Soda Jerk for their root beer and their orange alcoholic drinks. And then they had news come out today. I'm going to read this out loud, as I always do. Liquor House repurchases just about a half million shares in ongoing share buyback program and shares Fintel's updated price target of $306 per share. What's the current price? $4? <laughs> You're giving us a price of $306? Maybe it's $30.60, right? It's got to be a typo. Well, let's dive on into this. They tell us here that Liquor House has executed another tranche of its share buyback program, reinforcing its commitment to shareholder value. During the week ending December 15th, the company strategically repurchased almost a half a million shares at an average cost of $2.26. All right, it's a low price, but they're getting rid of those shares. That's all we care about. We're getting shareholder value. So that's really good news. But we're here to see that target price, right? So let's read what they say. Additionally, Fintel published an article on December 16th detailing a staggering 5,900% increase in the one-year price target, which is now, there it is, $306 per share. Now they tell us this was actually an 11,000, 12,000% gain from when they originally decided this. That was back when it was $2.57. We're, we're nowhere near there anymore, folks. We came off of that low bubble, climbed up, are tapping the 200, and she's about ready to rip. And with a price target like this, don't you think it's going to generate some excitement? I do. And even if it doesn't, isn't it worth putting on your watch list? Absolutely. And if the chart is set up for a breakout, shouldn't you be paying attention to it now? Right. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're going to do some charting. <laughs> this is Liquor House, ticker LQR. We're going to chart it and all the other stocks on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view for Liquor House, but this actually encompasses the entire time the company's been on the market. She came on the market August 10th, and they tell us that she hit a high of $435, starting at $300. Don't believe it. Never happened. So why is it on the board? I'll tell you what happened. At the end of November, she had a reverse split of 1 to 60. And rather than put a big green bar here where the price jumped 60 times up, they decided to alter the chart to accommodate the reverse split. How did they do that? Well, what they do is they take the number of the reverse split, the 60, and they multiply everything behind the split by that number. So everything behind it got multiplied by 60. So that $435 divided by 60, you're closer to $7. Now, whatever the prices were back then, she has been in a downfall all of this time. And here she hit a low bubble five days ago of 95 cents. Now, everything on this side of the reverse split, you can trust. These are all real numbers. So off of that low bubble, she started to slowly climb. Not a lot of price movement, but look at the increase in volume. It's huge. The next day was even huger, and now she is definitely climbing. She's gotten on top of her nine-day SMA, floating on it, just sitting there, and then came out the big news today, and she exploded. All this volume came into the picture. The price jumped twice, 
beating that 200-day SMA. And look, it is just at the point of going flat. It is a perfect setup for a breakout right now, folks. All of our other SMAs have turned up and are going towards that 200 right now. And all of our SMAs are hot. Our PPO percentage price oscillator, that's a lot like your MACD. The MACD uses the whole price. Your percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. Both of them are climbing right now. Our green bars are accumulating on our MACD. And even though our RSI has fallen, she's still in the overbought red hot at 75 right now. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. So we got a high bubble about 18 days ago of $7.80. Eh, no, we don't, right? It's on the wrong side of the bubble. <laughs> that reverse split, everything was multiplied by 60 on that side. So you'd have to divide that by 60. So here we are at our low bubble. You can see on our one hour chart, she's very strong. She has already broke out over that 200 and she is climbing, predominantly laying on her nine day SMA. When she gets too far away, she's falling back to her 20 day SMA. All of the SMAs are going in the right direction and here our 200 is already curved around and starting to climb. All of our oscillators are still climbing. Uh, let's see about our RSI. Yes, that's climbing too. She did come down underneath the overbought, but she is there. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Ooh, what a beautiful chart. There's that low bubble, 95 cents, just squeaking underneath the 200 day SMA and then squeaking up over it and then taking off. She has been climbing with some volatility, bouncing off of that 200. And right now she's had a serious bounce on this news going from about uh, $2.60 at open ooh, to $4.22 for a high. She did fall back, bouncing through her 50, coming back up. Looks like she's arguing with that 50 right now. Yeah, she's all over that 50 and now she's falling through it on her 20. Oscillators, uh, they're a little weak. They're more sideways than anything else. Right now, the chart on the low time span looks like she wants to curve around and fall. She's probably going to bounce. Folks, <laughs> this is big news. $306 for a stock that's at $4. Now, they're not saying it's worth that right now. They're saying within the year, this stock could be worth that. She is on that route right now. Now, I didn't see the road that big in front of her, but obviously I haven't done a deep dive. Maybe I need to. LQR, come on, put it on your watch list. Don't you want to see what happens tomorrow? This next stock, it presents us with a very unique opportunity, folks, a win-win scenario. And I don't see this too often. This is ticker PRSR, Prospector Capital Corporation. Now she's come out with two pieces of news in the last couple of weeks, and they're telling us about their immediate plans. If they succeed in their plans, we're going to get free shares. If they fail in their plans, we're going to make money. How? This is how it all breaks down. We normally wouldn't be looking at this company because it is a SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company. She hasn't made a deal and closed a deal yet. So her shares are roughly $10 a piece. I'm confusing you. All right, let me back up and tell you what a SPAC is. A special purpose acquisition company is a group of investors. They come onto the market and they secure a ticker, but they don't have any revenues because they don't have any business. What they're doing is looking for a private company or a company on a lower exchange that wants to get onto the major exchanges. They're going to cut a deal with them. But before they do that, they sell shares in the company, speculative shares at $10 a share. And the shares are worth $10 the entire time the company's on the market until they close a deal, until another company takes over. So if the company does not close a deal in the time limit, they get 18 to 24 months to do this. If they fail, there's a money back guarantee. No, I'm not kidding. The investors will get their money back. So you're going to get $10 back for every share you bought, regardless of what price you paid for those shares. So if the price was bid up to $11 and you bought a share and then the company fails to consummate a deal, you're only going to get $10 back. But if you bought them at $4.63 and they fail to do what they said they were, 
you're going to get $10 a share. That's free, easy money. And it is right around the corner. Failure. <laughs> now the chart, I'm going to be honest. I don't really care about the chart because this has nothing to do with the chart. It is just a countdown one way or the other. So PRSR, she finished today at $4.63 with just a smidge over 16% gains. And she too is on the NASDAQ. And of course she's a shell company. She hasn't got any business. She hasn't got any revenues and they haven't cut a deal yet. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, it jumped and it is a big jump actually. It went from 20,000 shares a day for the last 30 days to 370,000 shares today. It's not a huge number, but it is a big increase. Share structure for the company. We've got about 32 million in the outstanding share count. Don't know what the float is and it really doesn't matter, does it? Market cap for the company is currently $129 million. Financials for the company is zip. They don't have any money coming in because they don't have any business. And the disclosures, I'm sure they are all wrapped around this news. So I'm just going to jump into this news, folks. So we've got two pieces of news, a good piece and a bad piece. We're going to read the good piece first. That came out on the 7th of December. The bad news came out today. So looking at the one that came out on the 7th. Prospector Capital Corp. announces record and distribution date for issuance of dividend shares. The company did make a deal with another company. They are Letter Tech. I don't know when they did this, but it was a while ago and they've been trying to get it closed. They just haven't gotten there yet. And they tell us here that they are going to be issuing a dividend after they close this deal if you do not sell your shares. If you hang on to your shares, they're going to double your shares. They're going to give you a one-to-one -one ratio. And they say they're going to do that December 15th. Wait a minute. This is December 18th. Exactly. It didn't happen. They did not close the deal. The stock started falling. They didn't put out any news press on the 16th or the 17th. The stock kept falling. And today, they finally bring out a piece of news. They tell us here that the company announced that the conditions to closing the proposed merger with Letter Tech has not been satisfied and the business combination has not closed. They tell us that the company must consummate this initial business combination by December 31st of this year, folks. We are looking at 13 days away. If the business combination is not completed by that date, the company will, among other things, cease all operations except for the purpose of winding up and as promptly as reasonably possible, but not more than 10 business days thereafter, redeem the prosperous Class A ordinary shares at a per share price payable in cash. It'll just go right on into your portfolio account. You won't have any shares, you'll just have cash. So what they're saying here is that by January 10th, if they fail to close this deal by December 31st, your shares will be cashed out on January 10th at $10 a share. And right now you could be buying them at $4.63. Now, if that doesn't happen, they're going to succeed and close the deal, which means you're going to have twice as many shares. Sounds like easy money there too. As I said, folks, this is a win-win situation. Now, the charts had a huge fall. I'm really not concerned about the chart, but we're going to look at it anyways because that's what stock traders do. Yee, that's an ugly and drastic chart. This is ticker PRSR. This is Prospector Capital. We're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. This is what you normally see with SPACs, a line at the $10 zone. She took a bump up to $10.50 and then climbed up to $11.20. Now, anybody who bought those shares at $11.20, if and when this company fails to close a deal by December 31st, is only going to get $10 for each share. In most cases, there are exceptions to the rules. These SPACs, they get 18 to 24 months to consummate a deal. Well, if they need more time to close the deal, they can buy three months. They got to put more money in the bank, in the kitty, and that money is divided amongst all the shares. So your shares could be 1060, 
1090, 1120 a share if they've been doing that. I don't know if this company has or not. So we had that climb up to 1120 and it was on December 8th. She started her fall and she fell from that 1120 all the way down to $3.55 before she bounced up. And our oscillators, they're in bad, bad shape right now in the four hour chart. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. So you can see our fall, it was hard all the way down to that 355. That's when she stopped dropping and she bounced up to $6.65 today, falling back to $4.63. And it looks like she is breaking through the 20 day SMA and getting ready to climb. Our oscillators say that's about what's happening here. Our PPO is about ready to cross the pink line and it is climbing. Our MACD is pushing fast and furiously towards that signal line and we got green bars accumulating. And our RSI is climbing. It's come from 37 and is at a cool 49 right now. I don't like to see the RSI anywhere under 55. Taking a look at our five day, five minute. Whew, big drop, wow. Five days ago, this stock was at $10.29. Hitting that low yesterday of $3.55. She jumped up through the 200 Came back down, bounced off our 200-day haul. I thought that was reserved for Benny stocks. Got up on top of that 50, went sideways. Looks like she was waiting for that 200-day SMA because she is breaking out right now. So there's lots of opportunities here to make money. We've got a breakout here. You could play this and take some gains as she's climbing. You could buy in and hope she fails on January 10th, cash in your shares for $10 minimum for each share or worse come to worse, they succeed and you get twice as many shares. They'll double your share count. I'm liking this no matter which way you look at it. You know you want to put PRSR on your watch list. Go ahead and do it. Oh wait. Wow, that was fast. Our last stock we're taking a look at, it's a curious one. It is ticking all the boxes right now, becoming a hot penny stock. But I think she's under the radar because of what she does. This is ticker SNES Scenes Tech. Now her chart's interesting. She did a reverse split, a one in 12 back in November. So now we've got ourselves a real small float. The chart obviously took a big bounce, but it came back down. It's hit the 200 and it looks like it's ready to break out. Now the company's got a unique hot product. Their product makes rodents infertile, so they can't repopulate. They don't kill the rats. They just stop them from reproducing. And they are making a lot of deals in the United States and around the world. I think the revenues are about ready to explode. SNES, she finished today at 70 cents with almost 20% gains today, and she too is on the NASDAQ. Now they tell us over here, we are committed to improving the health of the world by humanely managing animal pest populations through fertility control. They're not killing these rats. They're not gonna eat your poison, crawl into the wall and die, or underneath your floorboard stinking up your whole house. They're just gonna stop them from repopulating. And did you know that two rats, they can start reproducing at as early as nine weeks old and they can create by repopulating, giving birth, giving birth up to 1200 rats a year. We are experts in fertility control to manage animal pest populations. We invented ContraPest, the only US EPA registered contraceptive for both the male and female rats. We also created Evolve, the soft bait, which is an EP designated minimum risk contraceptive currently offered for rats. ContraPest and Evolve fit seamlessly into all integrated pest management programs, significantly improving the overall goal of effective pest management. We strive for clean cities, efficient businesses, and happy households with a product designed to be humane, effective, and sustainable. So what was the relative volume around the company? Well, as I told you, we've got ourselves a very small float. Outstanding share count is just over 3 million. Insiders don't have very many of the shares, about 5,000 of them. So we get those 3 million, but still that is a very small float. Market cap for the company, 1.8 million. Looking at the financials, 
Looks like she has been growing over the last four years. Back in 2019, she was at $143,000. At the end of 2022, she broke a million, getting to keep just under a half a million dollars for profit. Quarterlies? Well, a year ago, we were at 250. Up and down, up and down. Right now, we are at a high. Our last quarter in September was $360,000, getting to keep $176,000 of that. Balance sheet for the company. Cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, about $2.1 million. Total assets is $3.8 million. Total liabilities is less, $1.1 million. That gives us stockholder equity of $2.7 million. Looking at the company's disclosures, we do have one recent 8K here that came out at the end of November, but this is actually in the news, easier to read over there. Now, the company's got lots of news. If you keep scrolling back, you'll see they've made deals with a lot of different companies and franchises. We're only going back to November 27th. You can get a flavor of what's going on here. The company launches Evolve, the soft bait fertility solution in California-based Ace Hardware franchise locations. The company is now also registered for use in Puerto Rico. And then we've got two pieces of news here I want to dive into. One that came out on the 14th and one that came out on the 18th of December. The one that came out on the 14th. SceneStack receives substantial orders for Evolve SoftBait. The first and only SoftBait contraceptive for rats with little or no risk to human health or the environment. The company announces the expansion of Evolve SoftBait with the substantial initial orders. Initially launched just here in November, Evolve is the first and only soft bait product featuring technology that targets rodent populations by using non-lethal methods to restrict fertility. The reaction to the launch of Evolve has been enthusiastic and immediate. Within days of the launch, we received pallet size orders for Evolve from a number of distributors. Combined with direct orders from pest management professionals and consumers, we have had to more than double our weekly production to meet demand and will soon double that again. And the other piece of news that came out on the 18th, Scenes Tech announces exclusive distribution agreement and initial orders for Evolve SoftBait in Hong Kong and Macau. Further expansion to mainland China is contemplated in the agreement. Wow, that's got to be a huge market. The company announces entry into a distribution agreement with Fruit Tree Limited, a pest control service provider, manufacturer, and distributor headquartered in Hong Kong. Fruit Tree Limited is a leading company in the pest control industry supplying products and services throughout the region, making them a perfect partner in this vital market. The agreement with Fruit Tree Limited includes both a substantial initial stocking order and annual minimums. We are thrilled to announce our partnership with Scenes Tech and the distribution of Evolve in Hong Kong and Macau with potential expansion to mainland China. We've already engaged with regulatory officials, securing the possibility of testing the product in government venues with significant infestations during the registration process. Of particular concern are the infestations in the wet markets. Wet markets are the traditional Chinese markets that sell fresh meat, produce, and other perishable goods. And I know exactly what they're talking about. When I was a very young man in the military, I was in Singapore. And I was in one of these wet markets during the day buying myself some fresh cut pineapple. God, is that stuff delicious. And down the road, I saw this small collie run across the road. But it had this weird, long, thin tail. And I looked at the guy. I said, what kind of dog was that? He goes, no dog, rat. And I went, rat? He gads, put a saddle on it and call it a pony. So they've got some serious problems over there with rats. Not just the number of them, the size of them, for God's sake. This collaboration with Fruit Tree Limited opens up exciting possibilities and an entry into one of the largest pest control markets on the planet with their support and expertise. Folks, rats is a problem like fire. It doesn't matter what the economy is. It is always going to be necessary and needed. And I think this company is in the right place at the right time. 
the world. <laughs> is there any place in the world that doesn't have rats? And do we really want to kill them? I mean, seriously, kill two rats. You could potentially be knocking out 1,200 rats. And it just takes a little bit of time. And there's no decaying carcasses anywhere. I think it's a hot product. I think they're going to make a lot of money with it. Let's go take a look at this chart. We're now taking a look at Scenes Tech, ticker S-N-E-S. This is a six-month, four-hour view. Now, I told you they did a reverse split in November of 1 and 12. That's what a reverse split looks like before they adjust the chart. You should see a big old green jump and then whatever happens afterwards. So this chart has not yet been adjusted. So everything we are reading is real and legitimate. The low hit just before the reverse split, just over 17 cents. After the reverse split, she was just over three bucks. Started the crash fast and then had a pop here in the midst of all of that going up to $4.10 and then fell hard all the way down underneath the 200, hitting a low of about 50 cents in this area. Now, it looks to me like she is intending to break out. Off of the low she hit here, she came back up, broke through the 200 with a very long wick, came down higher than where she started. That tells me she's looking for an opportunity. She came back down. She broke it again. Now, what do I think's holding her back? These strong SMAs on top of her head. We got the 200 haul and the 50-day SMA. The 20-day SMA has already come under the 200, leveled out, and is just now starting to turn up. That's what we need to see at least on the 50-day SMA. It's already across the 200. It is just now starting to level out. As soon as it starts to turn up, I expect it to create a gravitational pull, a current that's just going to suck the price in, pull it up over that 200, and she's going to start to climb. Volume has been increasing over the last three days, and it has been the last three days that our oscillators are starting to grow very slowly. Our PPO is about ready to cross that pink line. It is climbing. Our MACD has been climbing for three days just about ready to cross the signal line. And we've got three nice green bars there. And our RSI is a bit tempted. That is there at 52. Checking out our 20-day, one-hour view. So after the reverse split, she was going sideways, took a dip, and it was right here at $1.90. She took that pop to 410 after market, then fell after market all the way back down to the 200 here, slipped under the 200 and fell down to this low of 52 cents. And where is it sitting? <laughs> On the 200 haul. You can see how this comes into play with penny stocks a lot. Off of the low bubble and off the 200 haul, she has bounced through all of the SMAs, tagging the 200, Coming back down and landing on the 50-day, that's a better position than down here. She's hit the 200 again, come down, she's higher again. Now she's on the 9-day, and that 200 is just about ready to level out. You know she's going to be looking for this opportunity to break out, folks. Osculators, our PPO has crossed the pink line now, still continuing to grow. MACD has crossed the signal line. It's still above the line. Looks like it is just starting to turn back up. And our RSI is just under 55 at 54.2. Looking at our five-day, five-minute. So she was coming down, hit that low bubble, had a nice rip off of that up to 98 cents. You're looking at over 80% run there. Fell back down to the 200. Look at that. Solid smack. Jumped back up to the 50-day SMA, hung around that, had another big radical fall, another radical jump, and now she's going sideways. Folks, the chart on the long chart looks like she's ready to break out. You come down to these smaller time frames and she is kind of all over the place. But you see she is making deals all around the world, in the United States, in Hong Kong, Macau, and looks like she could be getting into China. And who doesn't need this product. Forget about killing your rats. Let's just stop them from reproducing. And then the rats that we didn't kill are just going to die of old age and they're going to disappear. We're not going to have the populations like we have right now. I really like this company, even if it is about rats. I think there's more due diligence needed on it. I didn't cover near as much as I could have. And I didn't cover everything with the other two stocks either. So please, folks, don't just count on what I tell you. There's a lot more to know.
And if you're investing your money, you need to know. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.